Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today as part of our virtual NSO uh, 2020 experience. We are glad that you have joined us today for an exciting conversation with the School of Education. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, if you have any questions during the session, please feel free to type those questions into our chat or our Q&A. Um, and if you're watching this as a recording, feel free to email us at boroughorientation at edinburgh.edu for any follow-up questions. Um, we are excited to feature the School of Education today. Um, and um, we will start our conversation with uh, Dean of School of Education and Executive Director of Graduate Studies, Dr. Lake. Good morning. Thank you, Denise, and welcome to all our new School of Ed admits. I'm here with four colleagues today. We're here to answer any questions that you might have. I, I want you to be successful and have a, a wonderful transition to university life. In fact, I'm broadcasting today from Butterfield Hall um, in, the, in the building, and even though it's quiet, we anticipate a very busy fall return. The president has announced a fall return. We are still working uh, with uh, department chairs and faculty to see exactly what that's going to look like. You might see some larger classrooms. I understand we might be in Memorial Auditorium for some classes, maybe in the Dome, uh, maybe in Crawford Gym. We'll just, we'll make it work. We're, we're like the Marines, we'll improvise, overcome and adapt. So you will still learn, you will still be successful. That's what we're here to do. Um, I've mentioned this before in some of my videos and um, PowerPoint, but Edinburgh University has been preparing teachers for 163 years. We have done that since 1857. It's one of our core, it's our core mission. That's what we do. And we have the best faculty who will help you get ready. You have picked an excellent time to come into the education profession. And again, the school that's a little more than just teacher prep and uh, Dr. Roberts will speak to that as well. But um, there, there is a national teacher shortage and uh, people, not a week goes by that I am not getting emails uh, trying to hire our graduates. They, they want to employ you. You will get a job if you're a teacher. Um, I just can't say enough about it. Um, the graduates who just graduated in May before they ever, right before the pandemic, they were getting job offers before they graduated. That's how sought after our graduates are. So um, congratulations on picking education and then also on picking Edinburgh. What we recently were very proud to announce is that we received CAPE accreditation. is the premier uh, teacher prep accreditation and Edinburgh is the only institution in the Commonwealth to have both initial and advanced accreditation from CAPE. So that's again, another indicator of our quality. And as you consider graduate programs, even uh, as you, you know, progress through your career, we're US News ranked. So you're in a great spot with great people who want you to succeed. So let me introduce some of them. Uh, we have Dr. Kimmy from Early Childhood. We have Dr. Wesley from Middle and Secondary, Dr. Roberts from Health and Phys Ed, and Dr. Casper from our Special Ed Department. Uh, very talented individuals. So let's turn it over to Michelle, Dr. Kimmy. Okay. Let me make sure I'm not muted. Okay, good morning. I am Michelle Kimmy. I teach in the early childhood and reading faculty. And I'm excited I get the chance to talk to you even in a virtual setting. It might be a little odd, but I can't wait to see you in person and get to talk to you in real life. But um, I'd like to start by sharing that I am a graduate from Edinburgh and I received my bachelor's degree in elementary and early childhood education. And I almost literally sat in the seat, seats that you sit in. So it's kind of exciting to be back teaching and working with students. The most exciting part is when you are out in the field and you're teaching your lessons and students are actually learning things. I love to have the conversation with students that they love teaching. This is what they came here for and they're so excited. That's the most exciting part of this. And early childhood, it's a fun major. Well, there might be a lot of work and there might be some grumblings later on. It is a fun major. You can't help but have fun when you are working with young children. Our majors tend to bond with each other through the experience. You will be working with children a lot. You'll be in schools quite a bit, hopefully, with these new mandates. It will look like it did last semester for us before this. 
you will have field experiences where you will be in a variety of settings and as many grade levels as possible so you get the right fit whether you want to teach kindergarten or third grade you'll get to experience as many as possible so you have that to look forward to also we have um, a pretty amazing literacy center and stem office and the seventh floor of the university library are amazing if you haven't seen them already you should take a journey and look. There are materials that you can borrow for your field experiences or student teaching. And it's just amazing. Um, I have to get my notes here. We have a new deaf ed program that is an early childhood and deaf ed teaching major. And I'm sure you have seen that, but if not, you can learn all about that program as well. In Butterfield, we also have two preschool rooms. There's the Butterfield Preschool, and then there's the WPSD, which is the Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf. So we have young children around the building quite a bit. Um, so that's kind of exciting. You may want to student teach in a different country. We have study abroad opportunities and work study opportunities. If you would like to work in the department and spend even more time with us, we would love that. Um, I'm forgetting a lot, but it is a fun major and I can't wait to actually see some of you. I will see your names and then I love when I get to actually see your faces and talk to you. Am I missing anything? I don't know. There's a lot, but um, please come and see us. Go visit your advisors, come see me. I'm on the third floor of Butterfield. Even if you're not in the major, just come. We're always there. Just stop by if you ever need anything and I can't wait to meet you. Oh, I did want to share one thing. I did bring pictures um, of some of our majors. So I wanted to share that these are pictures. I still keep in contact with quite a bit of our former students. And we have, you know, Tennessee, Virginia, Erie Public Schools, Beaver County. I just wanted to show you these are some things that they had posted. They're so proud to be in their classrooms. And this will be you someday. And hopefully you're sharing those photos with us on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, other than that, I can't wait to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Kimmy. And I should mention too, you reminded me right now we have a, a group of students who are uh, taking summer classes and they're helping the students in the Edinburgh community learn to read better. So um, normally we would have all these children in the building in the summer, bustling around, working with our students to become better readers, but we're still able to do that virtually. and. Um, that's our willingness to adapt and, uh, and make it happen. So also now I want to introduce Dr. Jim Roberts. Um, this is a guy who does more than just talk about health and fitness. He lives it. I don't know what marathon he's on because you can't run marathons right now, but he's done all 50 states and now he's looping back to do all 50 in under four hours. Um, he amazes me. Here he is, Dr. Jim Roberts. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of weird not being able to compete in any event right now with the pandemic, but um, but less about me and more about our program. In the health and phys ed department, we have uh, four different degrees and they're uh, each standalone degrees. So I'll go over each of those, a little bit about our faculty and uh, some of the things that we do in our department. So uh, the department itself is named after our K through 12 certification, which is health and physical education. And just like Dr. Lake had mentioned, uh, demand is, is very high now for teachers and good quality teachers and those that will advocate for their profession. So um, we have a very strong program related to this and are involved with uh, state and national organizations uh, such as One uh, Shape. And um, our teachers end up teaching all over the country and some have even taught worldwide. Um, we've had some of our HPE teachers teach in Turkey and Sweden, um, Alaska, and they're all over the country and the world. So um, a very good program and uh, 
you know, just one of the four areas we have. Secondly, we have a sport and recreation administration degree, and that degree is uh, for those that want to go more to the business side of sports and recreation or parks and recs or YMCAs. And equally as impressive, our students have uh, gone to places to work such as the Pittsburgh Pirates, the U.S. Uh, Olympic Training uh, Facility in Colorado Springs. We had a student do an internship with uh, the NHL team, the Tampa Lightning. Um, so depending on how hard you work and what your goals are, um, really you can end up anywhere you want with that degree. Also working more like in the front office of um, that. And even some less commonly thought of ones. We have a, a former student who's in charge of operations at Lake Erie Speedway and he did his internship at NASCAR. So, um, so our students go you know, quite a different variety of areas within uh, sport and recreation uh, management as well. So um, next uh, we have exercise science and that's our newest, used to be called human performance track. And exercise science uh, takes people in career paths such as cardiac rehab, personal training, strength and conditioning coach, PT school, OT school. We have a former student in med school right now um, who did all his undergraduate work through HPE in human performance. So there's, again, a variety of uh, places people can end up there. For many of our exercise science students, um, a lot of them want to go on to PT or OT school. And this is the biggest area of admissions to graduate PT and OT schools is exercise science or movement-based science. Uh, and in this program, students will do their own research project. Uh, they take exercise physiology, kinesiology, sports nutrition, and a variety of classes that usually appeal to people that have an interest in this area and their um, career track. And then our final degree track is health and wellness studies, which is based more towards health education and promotion, such as uh, local health departments, nonprofits such as the Red Cross or March of Dimes and jobs that are related to that. And um, we, we do have people at a variety of places throughout the state and the country with that degree as well. Um, in our department, the last couple of years, we've been doing some study abroad uh, experiences and uh, we were fortunate enough to have Dr. Lake attend um, our study abroad to uh, England and Scotland. Uh, this year's study abroad got canceled due to COVID. Um, just missed it by like a week or so. Um, and we're, we're tentatively scheduled to go to Athens, Greece next summer. Um, we'll see if that happens or not, uh, which is just completely rich in history related to sport and the Olympics and marathoning and um, you know everything related to our department. So uh, as far as our faculty, our faculty is very well established and we have people on staff to, who have published books. We have Many of our faculty have presented worldwide, um, and so just a variety of experiences that students, new students coming in, um, can get a lot of experiences uh, from the things that our faculty have done and can help get you where you want to go. Um, we have a few clubs on campus in our department, HPE Majors Club, Exercise Science Club, and a sport and rec club and all those um, go to professional conferences where you get to meet and network with people. Um, sometimes it gives you scholarships or grants through those organizations. And so it's really a nice experience. And we also do some charity work such as blood drives. We volunteer at the Boston Marathon. So there's a, a wide range of activities students can uh, benefit from by participating within those clubs. I think that's the uh, short version of the summary of our department. All right, thank you, Dr. Roberts. Next up, we have Dr. Whitney Wesley. She is the department chair for the middle and secondary and educational leadership department. Um, I hope she'll take a minute to talk about the NOISE grant. She was instrumental in the development of that. But then also, um, she really had a great initiative last year to make the second floor of Butterfield a little more beautiful. If she could talk about her mural project, that would be great also. Absolutely. So I'm Dr. Wesley, as Dr. Lake mentioned, I'm the chair of the middle and secondary ed department. Uh, as a department overview for the programs that we offer, we offer all of our middle level majors, which are certifications in grades four through eight, and the secondary majors are certifications in grades seven through 12. Each of those can be standalone 
certifications or you can double them up with a certification in special education. Um, all of our programs follow a very similar sequence. Your first semester, you will work uh, weekly with an academic advisor during common hour uh, to learn more about your education program as a major on campus and uh, with all the other freshman uh, majors on throughout campus as well. So it's departmental and campus wide. You'll be assigned an advisor who specializes in either middle level or secondary education who will follow you through your program, keeping you on track with your course sequence, um, introducing you to other add-on endorsements or minors that you might be interested in. We offer endorsements in online education, ESL specialist certification, and integrated STEM education. Uh, those are the endorsements that would come directly from our department, but there are endorsements from other education departments as well that you're able to add on to your programs. We, uh, many of our students will choose to pick up a minor in SPED if they don't want to um, complete the full certification in special education. You can add it as a minor to your program, or uh, we're gonna be rolling out a new minor in trauma-informed teaching practices uh, this fall, which we are very excited about. And within that minor is embedded the endorsement in um, mental health in schools. So that's kind of a two for one minor endorsement add-on that you can take. Following your first semester, all of your subsequent semesters will include at least one education course in middle and secondary ed. Uh, if not, many of them include two co-requisite education courses. And all of our courses leading up to field and student teaching contain embedded field experiences. So you'll be out in schools working with teachers and students uh, throughout your entire program. As Dr. Kimmy mentioned, you can choose to student teach abroad um, as well as participate in other study abroad programs um, or we will be starting a honors program um, as part of the honors college specific for education majors. So we've created some honors based education classes if you will be um, a member of the honors college. All of our faculty are former middle level or secondary teachers. Many of them have been also principals and school superintendents, and they are the faculty who most often do our field and student teaching supervision. So you'll be supervised uh, by a faculty member who was a former principal. So they can be supervising from the perspective of what they would want to see if you were a faculty member in their building and what their expectations would be. Our program ends with an exit interview and portfolio showcase that we get you ready for um, student teaching. And this is where you will practice uh, basically preparing for a job interview. And as Dr. Lake mentioned, many of our students are offered jobs before their student teaching placements are even done. By midterm, many of them are signing contracts, just waiting for the final paperwork to come through from PDE or Edinburgh. Um, regarding some of the extra exciting news that Dr. Lake mentioned, we have a NOICE grant scholarship for students who are pursuing certification in any of the STEM fields, so biology, chemistry, math, or physics. This will pay for your last two years of your program uh, to earn your certification. And then in return, you will be placed in a high needs school uh, teaching for four years. And uh, many of our students sometimes wonder what a high needs school means, what that really looks like. Um, and interestingly enough, nearly every school district in Northwestern Pennsylvania qualifies as a high needs school because it's based on not only um, the free and reduced lunch rate of that district, but it can also be based on the high need of filling that position, which many STEM teaching positions are considered high need. So it's not necessarily um, always an impoverished district. It's not necessarily always an urban or a rural district. Um, sometimes it's the run of the mill everyday district that many of you attended um, growing up. We also have, um, exciting for you to see when you're back on campus in fall, all of the murals throughout the building. Uh, one of the most exciting, the largest, is the influential educators throughout history mural that is right outside of the main office on the second floor of Butterfield. 
um, which is also right outside of my office. So if you ever need me, um, it's an easy visual to know where to find me. My office is right next to the very large mural. Um, so we're super excited about all the murals now decorating our hallway. Um, I see a question popping up about the grants. If you are interested in applying for that grant, um, you can email me directly and I can send you some more specific information about that grant. My email is wwesley, W-W-E-S-L-E-Y at edinburgh.edu. Um, and I can go over more of the specifics and stipulations to that grant, uh, but I'm happy to share any additional information about that. Uh, as an educate middle and secondary education major, we do have a middle and secondary education club that is very involved uh, in the region, out in schools, um, helping teachers, running after school programs, tutoring, um, all that sort of thing. So we have lots to offer. We are super excited to work with you. Um, and please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or would like any additional information. Thank you. All right. Dr. Wesley, I think the question came up, is this grant the same as the teacher grant? No, the teach grant um, is open to a wider variety of education majors um, and is separate from the NOICE Teaching Scholar grant. They can be used in conjunction though um, so if you're interested in the NOICE scholarship as a STEM certification major, um, please contact me. If you're interested in the TEACH grant, um, you can certainly still contact me. Just let me know which particular grant information you're looking for, and I can direct you to that information. All right. Thank you, Dr. Wesley. Yep. So the largest undergrad major in the school of ed is the dual, the early childhood and special ed dual degree. And with us today, very talented faculty member from the special education department, Dr. Casper. Hi everyone. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you um, and say that oftentimes individuals, when they come to our program, they are, or know that they are natural teachers. They have this gift to work with students and they can do it well. And what they, what you end up as being natural teachers coming here and what we do is work on developing those skills. But I just, a lot of times I think people just have that natural teaching ability and skills and have the heart of an educator, uh, which I don't think we can teach a heart of an educator. I think that's a gift that you bring to us. And part of that, a lot of times whenever people are sitting in my classrooms or we've talked or come to my office uh, when they first get here, uh, they often talk about wanting to make a difference. And as, an, as a major working in special ed and right now early childhood as a dual major, um, you can make a huge difference in the life of a child. And there are not many programs, you know, other different majors where you get that feeling. Uh, that is an amazing, awesome feeling. Uh, the dual major in early childhood and special education is highly sought after. Uh, school districts hire dual majors uh, and they want teachers who can deal with or work with all students in the classroom and be able to uh, change instruction so that all students are successful. Uh, part of the the beauty of a special education major is much like my own career whenever I started out. I have worked in multiple fields, not only in the classroom, uh, but in multiple settings. Your certification will cover individuals working with individuals with learning disabilities, emotional behavior disorders, intellectual disabilities, autism spectrum disorder, physical impairment, and traumatic brain injury. So it's quite a wide. Uh, it's a difference or a lot of variation in students that you can work with. And it's interesting because people say, wow, they find a place that really is their niche. And that, that was my uh, experience with low incidence disabilities. I, my specialization is working with kids with moderate to severe disabilities because I just loved it. And that path has taken me not only to classroom teaching, but also, I started out in a school that was strictly a center, much like the Barber Center, where they have specifically just kids with disabilities in that school. Uh, so 
your ability to choose as far as what you want to do in your career path uh, can be in the typical regular school, working in a resource room or working in a self-contained classroom or working in a regular classroom, but you have kids with special needs in your classroom, which is probably more often than not. And uh, also you can work in alternative ed. You can work in public or private schools. Um, you can work in residential facilities. So we're thinking like outside of the school area. And that's where I worked. I worked in a group home for a while. Uh, and I also worked in vocational programs where you could work with uh, individuals that are in job training or trying to find job placements and help them prepare for life. Uh, much like the residential programs, working with younger children, you know, children you might be able to work in home programs or early intervention programs. So you traveling to the students rather than working in a school setting. And some special ed teachers also find positions in hospitals, uh, working with students with emotional issues and being the, the teacher of record within those facilities. Uh, but it is, I, I worked not only in all of those settings <laughs> over my years, and as well as the school district, you know, I worked as a classroom teacher for nine years. So I worked as a behavior specialist in a, a private facility. So my career path took me in many different places and all of them were amazing. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, so if you look at what you can choose within your career, there are many, many facets. In fact, I, this is kind of an interesting one. I have a friend who works down in um, North Carolina because our teachers can go pretty much all around the country. There's high demand. I, and she works part of her day in the classroom working with her students on academics. And the other part of the day, they have a nursery, uh, nursery, you know, a greenhouse uh, attached to the school. She works with her students on uh, developing skills so that they can work in a nursery type of setting or a garden setting uh, as far as a goal when they leave school. So it's, if you say to yourself, well, you know what, I don't see myself in a classroom all day long. Uh, there are multiple, multiple opportunities out there. And in each one of those, you can say to yourself, you're making a difference. You go home every day and you feel like you've made a difference. And that is a very, it is a very rewarding career. Uh, thanks, I'll see you when you come to campus. Thank you, Dr. Casper. And, and you touched on it with, um, with this pandemic and everything going on in the world. Um, we need more teachers. Look how they've adapted to the new normal and parents became teachers and they appreciate how difficult the task is. So um, I wanna sort of go around our panel briefly just with one thing. Uh, if you're on this webinar and you probably wonder what should I do now to get ready? Uh, my advice at orientation always is go to edinburgh.edu, type clearances in the white search box and read our page. Uh, the school bed requires a lot of clearances because we put you out early and often into public schools. So if you're gonna be out there, you need them. So uh, make yourself familiar with that. Um, even take a folder and write clearances on it and then start keeping any that you have. You're responsible to keep those original documentation the original documents, I mean. But if we could go around our panel here and just if you had any suggestions on um, what our students should be doing over summer and, uh, until we start, I think we should share them. I'd say use the downtime to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Stress there'll, really be enough, there'll be enough schoolwork when, when fall comes and, and it is a different delivery, so yeah. Anybody else? Any advice? For the middle and secondary students, and I'm sure this applies to all of the other education majors as well, we really um, encourage you to find things and ways to set yourself apart from other education majors as you are applying for jobs. And by doing that means to find ways to work with students, to be engaged in schools, with teachers, with communities um, throughout your four years here. So to start that, the summer before you come here um, gives you even more of a leg up. 
And even though many activities aren't running um, face to face like they normally would, there's plenty of opportunities to be engaged virtually in helping schools and students prepare for the upcoming school year um, or virtual summer camps that you can assist in running. Uh, because as we tell our students, every education major in Pennsylvania has to meet the exact same requirements. So you have to find things that set you apart from the basic set of requirements that all of your competition is going to have as well. So really building your resume, building your portfolio throughout your summers is important. And can you answer the question? Uh, do you see the post? Um, I don't see a question. Uh, clearance is the first semester. It's going to depend if you, if, um, academic services scheduled you for an education class your first semester. For many students, clearances won't be required until the second semester, um, but it doesn't hurt to get them for your first semester. Uh, and it's one of the things that you'll work on in common hour as well. So if you don't have them or if you don't have all of them by the time this semester starts, that's fine. We will we'll help you and assist you in getting them finished. Um, but definitely by the second semester of your first year, you're going to want to have all of your clearances on file in the Dean's office. If I can chime in, if you're a transfer student, most likely we will require uh, clearances um, to give you those classes because we don't want you to fall behind. Um, and, you know, um, so important for transfer students, especially. Okay. All right. Any more advice on what our prospective students should be doing between now and August? I echo the clearances as well, just because it's not something you want to worry about when you're getting excited to go out into the schools. And, you know, if you are, if you live two hours away and, you know, mom has it and you need it tomorrow, you know, that's another hassle you don't want to deal with. And I say this from multiple years of experience in dealing, <laughs> helping students get clearances. So work on that and just continue to get excited. Okay. And I have the, the, uh, the special education professional organization is the Council for Exceptional Children. And they have a, a student chapter of the Council for Exceptional Children on camps, campus. Blah. And also uh, they do a lot on the national level. They're advocates for individuals with disabilities. I suggest checking out their website and see what they do and how they're involved and all the amazing work that they do. And think about getting involved when you come on campus. Our, ch our campus chapter is a lot of fun. All right, well, thanks everyone. Uh, we hope this answered any questions that are out there. Um, my email is lakee -E at edinburgh.edu. If you need anything, let me know. I'm in the building all summer. We cannot wait to start back to school in the fall. And remember, we start a week earlier, August 17th. So any questions, contact us. We're here for your success. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who participated, all the panelists. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Um, everyone who attended, thank you so much. Just a reminder, we do have our next step, which is our, um, our NSO Facebook Live event this Thursday at 3 p.m. You should have received an email. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, everyone. Hopefully, you're enjoying a great summer. See you in the fall. Bye-bye.